Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about pH curve of strong acid, strong base titration. Tied to learning objectives from the College Board, you may want to pause the video to read them. Titration involves adding a titrant of known concentration from a buree into an unknown concentration in a flask. The equivalence point is calculated stoichiometrically where moles of the titrant is equal to the moles of analyte and often signaled by the color change of an indicator, which we call the endpoint. The progress of the titration is monitored carefully by a plot of pH as a function of volume of titrant added, which we refer to as the pH curve. And today we're going to learn about the pH curve of strong acid, strong base titration. So to plot the pH curve, uh, when you have a computer, when you do the actual lab itself, it will then give you the plot of all points connected into a smooth curve. But for our calculation purposes, we are going to calculate the pH at four points and then connect these four points into a smooth curve. So the first point is before we add the titrant, what is present in the beaker and the pH reading. Then halfway to the equivalence point, and then exactly at the equivalence point, the pH, and finally beyond the equivalence point. Uh, what we need to do is to write the proper net ionic equation of the titration reaction. We also need to calculate moles of the species in millimoles. It's much easier to calculate when you take molarity times milliliter without going back and forth to convert it into liter. And we also make use of the ice table, initial change and N table to calculate pH. Now here's the problem. 20 milliliter of 0.1 molar HCl titrated with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. First, we need to calculate the volume of the strong base to reach the equivalence point. Now write the net ion equation. You have the hydrogen ion and the hydroxyl ion to make water. At the equivalence point, we use the formula MAVA is equal to MBVB. Now, since we know uh, it's 0.1 molar uh, HCl 20 milliliter and 0.1 molar NaOH, we can calculate the volume of NaOH added to reach the equivalence point, which in this case is 20 milliliter. Now we are ready to do our titration calculation. Point A. This is when no NaOH is added, the flask only contains HCl. Well, HCl ionizes completely, therefore the hydronium ion concentration is equal to the concentration of the initial HCl, which is 0.1 molar. So pH is 1.00. The beginning pH is quite low because HCl is strongly acidic. Now we're going to calculate point B, the second point, which is halfway to the equivalence point. At this time, we would add it half the amount, which is 10 milliliter of NaOH. So the hydrogen ion is calculated as, in the beaker or in the flask, 0.1 molar times 20 milliliter, which is 2.0 millimole to begin with. Now we add the hydroxide ion, which is 1 millimole. Right in the net ionic equation, now we have attached the value of 2 millimole for hydrogen ion, 1 millimole for the hydroxide ion. The change is 1 millimole, and we have leftover excess of hydrogen ion, one millimole in a total volume of 30 milliliter. Please note that we add 20 to 10 to come up with 30 milliliter. So the concentration is 0 0.033 molar and the pH is calculated as 1.48, which is a slight increase from 1.00. Now at the equivalence point, when 20 milliliter of sodium hydroxide is added, so now we have two millimole of both H plus and OH minus. These will be used up and we just have water, which has a pH of seven. Now the last point beyond the equivalence point, when we add an excess of sodium hydroxide, so this time we added 30 milliliter, 10 milliliter beyond the equivalence point. So hydrogen ion is still two millimole, hydroxide now is three millimoles. And setting up the ice table, we then have one millimole of the hydroxide ion remaining in excess and that's over total volume of 50 milliliter, which is 0 0.02 molar, being the concentration. So the POH is 
and the pH by subtracting pOH from 14 is 12.30. So the pH is quite high because there's excess hydroxide ion present. Now let's take a look at the pH curve. This is a plot of pH as a function of volume of NaOH in milliliter added. So you see a very smooth curve from point A, B, to C, to D. Notice at point A, this is initially when no NaOH is added, so pH is determined by the uh, complete ionization of the hydrochloric acid. At point B, this is halfway to the equivalence point. Equivalent point, we have 20 milliliter added, so halfway is 10 milliliter. At this point, the hydrogen ion is in excess. At the equivalence point, both acid and base are used up, pH is seven for the water. And beyond the equivalence point at point D, now we have excess hydroxide uh, dictating the pH value. Now notice that the, uh, the rise in the, 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 uh, in the pH value around the equivalent point in that slope is quite, quite steep, quite straight actually. So one drop of the uh, hydroxide could bring the pH, let's say from four or five all of a sudden to nine or eight. And uh, this is the characteristic of a strong acid, strong base titration curve. So reiterate what I just said earlier, beginning pH is low at one. Near equivalent point pH changes sharply to produce a very steep slope, almost a straight line. pH at the equivalence point is seven. To summarize what we have learned today, we learned how to calculate the various pH values along the pH curve of a strong acid, strong base titration. We also analyze the characteristics of the pH curve. Now, I hope that you find the video helpful. If you like it, please give us a like, and please also subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you again real soon.